Hi everybody, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm sharing with you today an invisible zip tip that might just blow your mind. This is a really excellent technique, not very well known, and it uses these awesome little guys called a hemostat, although you can use tweezers if you want to. It really will help you take your invisible zip game to the next level. And I learned it from my mother-in-law who picked it up from one of her sewing magazine subscriptions, Threads Magazine. It really is a total game changer, so do stay tuned and see what all the excitement's about. As always, any of our products I talk about today will be linked below, as will our lovely, lovely website and if you like what you see today please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. Okay so here I have the seam where I'm going to insert the invisible zip and I've just used a fusible interfacing. I've marked the point where my zip will end and I've used a fusible interfacing which just extends past that point where the zip's going to end which is here I've just extended it about an inch and a half two inches past that point and then I'm going to take the fabric to the machine and just use a long basting or tacking stitch about four four and a half um, just to sew that first bit of the seam down to the point where the zip will end or where I want the zip to end so just using that long tacking stitch there and you'll see why we're doing this later or will be revealed with the clever technique that I'm going to show you so we we'll just keep going till we get to that little point that I've marked there and then when we reach that point where we want the zip to end I'm just going to shorten my stitch length and then that'll just be a normal stitch length probably about two two and a half and then I'm going to back tack just to secure everything and then sew the rest of the seam in the normal way. So this will be the part of the seam that's below where your zip ends. So we'll just keep sewing that in the usual way. I'm just using a contrasting thread here so you can see what's going on more easily throughout the video. And then at the end of the seam, obviously just back tack to secure in the normal way. So here's the seam I've just sewn, so it's basted so far down and then I did the back tack and did the normal length stitches and where I want my zip to end I've marked on the seam allowances and then I've just applied some of this wonder tape down the seam allowances. I like to use this, it's a double sided transparent tape that will just allow me to position the zip and reposition if I need to and I just find it a bit easier than pins. It does wash away as well and it doesn't gum up your sewing needle so I really like using this. Um, I'll pop links to it below um, but if you want to just use pins that's absolutely fine. And then I've also pressed open the zip tapes as well so that's a really good tip when you're working with invisible or concealed zips is just to press open the tapes or press them flat. I'm just showing you, I'm not actually using this iron but this is um, one of our mini irons. We also do prim ones as well and they're quite good for these sort of little tasks. Um, you can actually press across the teeth and press it flat, use a bit of steam. Some people worry about melting the teeth. I've only ever used YKK zips which are the ones we sell on our website and I've never had a problem with those but if you're nervous you could always just push the iron along the tape and just try and push push the coils open and you'll see what I mean if I compare it to this zip here where I haven't done that you can see how much flatter and more open the zip tape that I've pressed is compared to this one where the teeth are really sort of coiling back onto the tape so you can see why that makes such a difference there now we're going to close the zip and I'm going to remove the white paper so that I'm revealing the sticky side of the tape and then I want to take my zip which is a lot longer than I want it to be for the pattern as well so that's really important for this technique that you've got a good few inches of extra length on your zip to what you actually need and you'll see why in a minute but I just want to position the zip so that the centre of the zip is running down the centre 
of the same line so I can line up the same line with the center of the zip as I go and just check that as I roll it onto the same allowances I can just see that that's lining up nicely and just make sure it's accurate and it's following the right path so I'm just doing that now working my way all the way to the end of that basting tape and I've also marked on my zip tapes where I want the zip to end so I can make sure they're lining up with the markings on the seam allowance and then I can stick that down so I can see everything's lining up as it should do and then one additional step you can do which you don't have to do it's not absolutely necessary but it is recommended because it just helps you to confirm that everything's definitely in place and it hasn't moved is you can just hand tack the zip tapes to the seam allowances and just go about half an inch below where the zip's going to finish when you do this so i'm just going to do that now it's a bit awkward doing it from this angle with the camera um, but I'm going to do some nice big stitches so it won't take very long but it's a step worth doing especially if it's perhaps the first time you've tried this method or you're not particularly confident with invisible zips. So I'm going to just sew these large tacking stitches all the way at the seam allowance on this side and then I'll work my way back down the other side afterwards. So you can see there, I've just tacked the zip tapes down to the seam allowances, not going through the main fabric, just the seam allowances, obviously. We don't want to be going through the main fabric there. And now we're ready to do the really exciting bit. So everything's in place. And in the meantime, I've unpicked the machine stitched basting stitches. So you can see the normal size stitches start here but the machine stitch section I've unpicked that and then this is where the real magic happens we're going to unzip the zip I've just got it caught on the tape there but we're going to unzip the zip like so and then we're going to take this tool called a hemostat, which is like, I believe it's a surgical tool. And they're like a pair of pliers, which are really useful for this task, but also for turning corners on collars and waistbands and that sort of thing. So a useful investment. You can find these on the web. But what we're going to do is turn it over. I'm going to feed the hemostat through the gap there. And then I'm going to grab the end of the zipper like so. Now you can use a pair of tweezers to do this if you haven't got a hemostat. I've used a pair of tweezers to do this before that works just fine so just bear that in mind. But we've got the end of the zip caught there now in the hemostat and that will allow me to just pull that zip all the way down to the end there. So you can see now as I mentioned, this is a lot longer than it needs to be, but what the beauty of that is, is that I haven't got to worry when I'm sewing these zips, these uh, zip, the zip to the seam allowances, I haven't got to worry now when I get to this part about having a stopper. I've got a clear run at that. I can sew it exactly as I want to, and then um, I can just zip the zip back to the top and shorten the zip tapes afterwards and that's the real magic of this method and it allows you to avoid any bubbling or awkwardness at the end where you often find you get that when you're trying to sew around the zipper uh, stop at the end. So I'm going to use my invisible zipper foot which has got these little grooves on the underside that helps to just feed the teeth through and keep everything in position. I just need to thread my thread through that little hole at the front. It's a little bit fiddly sometimes. Um, you can thread it through first and then attach the foot to your machine as well. That's another way of doing it. But I really do recommend using a concealed or invisible zipper foot. We sell these for a wide range of brands on our website. I'll pop the links in for you. Um, they just really help get good results with invisible zips. And I'm just going to position the zip underneath the foot. I've adjusted my needle position so I'm getting the stitching exactly where I want it and I'll talk to you about that in a minute but you just lower the foot so that the zip teeth sit in those little grooves 
that's where I want to be stitching and I'm just going to back tack at the start to secure and then what I like to do is use needle up down on my machine so that when I stop stitching the needle stays down and the foot lifts up and that just helps me manoeuvre over that little stopper at the top because that can be a little bit awkward sometimes with these feet and then once I've manoeuvred my way over that I can just stitch the rest of the seam no problem just making sure the teeth are staying at a right angle to the fabric they should be vertical really you don't want them pushing over to one side or the other and I'm not stitching right next to the teeth I'm stitching you can almost see a line down the zip tape where I'm stitching and um, it's important to get that positioning right but you'll get used to that and once you've found the right needle position on your machine it's worth just making a note of where that is and I'm just sewing past where I want the zip to end I've got that marked there and I'm going to back tack to secure so that's where I want everything to finish and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side of the zip you can see I've just stitched that neatly down that side and I just need to move my needle across so that I can repeat the process on the other side and there we go I know I know it's one on my machine needle position one um, that's where I want it to be so that it's equal on both sides as well and then just do the same technique again just back tack at the start at the top to secure work my way over that annoying little stopper which can be a bit of a pain and then once you get going as I say it's super easy you can use an adjustable zipper foot if you want to um, but I really like using a, a concealed zipper foot and there we have it Okay, so here we have everything sewn in place, ready to go. Obviously, I need to just remove those hand basting stitches. But the last step now is just to simply pull the zipper all the way to the top. And voila, there is your perfect invisible zip, totally invisible to the eye. I just need to give that a nice press now. There's no sort of bubbles or weird bits down here. It's a lovely, neat finish. And then just to finish it off completely, I would just sew a few zigzag stitches over the end of just the zip teeth themselves and then you can quite literally just snip off the end with a pair of scissors so I would sew this, the stitches first and then I would use a better pair of scissors than this there we go they're not my favorite scissors but um, yeah you can just snip the end off but I'd sew just a few zigzag stitches just to secure the zip at the end there and there you have it just the perfect invisible zip so I hope you enjoyed that today um, and you can see it just works beautifully so I hope you enjoyed that today it blew my mind the first time I saw that and I've used it many many times since it's such a game changer as I said at the start of the video any of the products available on our website are linked below and also do check out our lovely website which is also linked below and if you like what you see today please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time